All right, in this video, we are going to take a look at what's called the phase plane equation for a system of differential equations. In particular, we're going to consider autonomous differential equations, meaning uh, the equation for dx dt is going to be independent of t, and the uh, equation for dy dt also will be independent of t. So when our um, differential equations, our system is non-autonomous, um, then this won't necessarily work for all of those systems. But for an autonomous system, what we're going to talk about in the next couple of uh, videos, um, we can look at what's called the phase plane equation. So ideally, when we're solving a differential a system of differential equations, um, ultimately what we're looking for in the end is a solution. How does x depend on time? How does y depend on time? And then we've talked about how we could plot those solutions x and y separately. So maybe we find some solution over here and we find some solution over there. Um, and we've also talked about how um, we can plot solutions in the phase plane. And when I look at the two dependent variables. Um, so that we looked at in the previous week's um, work. So um, I want to talk about in this video and in some of the future ones um, how we can solve at least the phase plane equation for a system of differential equations. Okay, so how we first of all find the phase plane equation Okay, and so finding the phase plane equation is going to be an application of the chain rule. So just recall um, what the chain rule says is that um, if I want to figure out what the derivative of y is with respect to t, um, and I know that y depends on x and x depends on t, then I take the product of the derivative. So we have dy dx times dx dt is equal to dy dt. Um, but if we are interested in figuring out how x and y depend on each other, then we can solve, uh, rearrange the terms in the chain rule to solve for dy dx. And so if I were to divide both sides by dx dt, then I can get the phase plane equation. So basically, the phase plane equation, we take the the one differential equation for y down here, that goes on top, and then we divide by the differential equation that we have for x, and that goes on the bottom. So it almost seems like the dt's cancel each other out, like if we were dividing two fractions, um, but be careful, that that's not exactly how this works. What we're really doing is using the chain rule and just rearranging the terms in the chain rule. Okay, so um, we call this resulting equation for dy dx the phase plane equation since solving that equation is going to tell us what the solutions look like in the xy phase plane. In this video, we're going to take a look at an example of a system of autonomous differential equations. And so what we mean by autonomous is that this differential equation doesn't depend on time um, directly and this doesn't depend on time um, directly, but indirectly they do. So if time changes, then x changes, and that, in effect, is going to have a, a change on y. Um, so first we want to write out the phase plane equation, then we're going to solve that resulting differential equation, and then we can show what the results, um, what the solutions are going to look like in the xy phase plane. So to set up the phase plane equation, we're going to find the formula for dy dx. And so recall to find that formula for dy dx. Um, by applying the chain rule, we would take dy dt and divide by the differential equation for dx dt. So put the y on top, the x on the bottom. So on top, we have the equation for dy dt minus 2x. And on the bottom, we have the equation for dx dt, which is 7y. And um, notice this is a separable differential equation, so we can separate and bring the 7y to the other side. So we have 7y dy on one side, we bring the dx to the other side, and that gives us minus 2x dx. Um, integrating both of these sides, on the left side we would have 7 halves y squared, 
And on the right side, we would have minus x squared, and then we have an arbitrary constant that I'll put plus c. And so if I bring the x squared to the other side, that gives me x squared plus 7 halves y squared is equal to c. So that would be our phase plane solution. Um, and if we want to graph this, which is the next part, then this almost looks like a circle, except we have that 7 halves in front of the y squared. And that's going to make this an ellipse. Um, so each of these graphs in the phase plane should be an, an ellipse. And for each value of c, we're going to get a different ellipse. And so one thing that we should note here is that at minimum, c can be 0. And so if c were a negative number, there's no way that we could take x squared, which is going to be at least greater than or equal to 0, and add it to another term which is greater than or equal to zero and wind up getting something negative. So the smallest value for c that we could pick would be c equals zero. And so when um, c is equal to zero, the only points that are gonna satisfy that equation would be those single point zero zero. So that's kind of a um, singularity there. Um, if we think about c being equal to one, then we've got the equation x squared plus 7 halves y squared is equal to 1. We have an ellipse, so um, if we set y equal to 0, we would get the x-intercepts at minus 1 and positive 1. And if we set x equal to 0, um, then we can find the x-intercepts, uh, excuse me, the, the y-intercepts at 0 minus the square root of 2 sevenths and um, 0 plus the square root of 2 sevenths. So um, given the x and the y intercepts, we could plot over here just a very informal uh, graph of this. So the, um, the major axis goes along the x-axis, and the, the smaller radius would be along the y-axis. And we can spread this out and look at solutions for different values of c, and that gives us... Um, this kind of bullseye of ellipses. So in blue, I have um, the curve that I sketched very roughly down here. And as we increase the value of C, these ellipses are getting um, wider and wider, minor and major um, axes. And somewhere in the middle here, or exactly in the middle here, we kind of had this um, degenerate case when C was equal to zero, we just had the origin. Um, and so again, one thing that you want to be careful about is we found a solution in the phase plane, but we actually don't know how x depends on time and how y depends on time. So we haven't solved for x and y, and there is a time component in, in this system that we miss if we just look at the phase plane diagram. So for example, I don't know which way we're rotating around this. Um, am I moving clockwise or counterclockwise around these curves over here. Um, but we can figure that out by thinking about the signs of dx dt and dy dt. So for example, if I were right up here at this point um, on the curve for c is equal to 3, um, for this point, what we know is that x is 0, y is not 0. In fact, y is a positive number up here. And so if I were to plug in 0 for x and a positive number for y, then that value would be positive. Um, so that means dx dt being positive means we would move in the positive x direction to the right. So um, if we're moving to the right over here, that means on this curve we must be moving in this clockwise direction. And the same would go for, for the other one. So over here... We have um, all of our trajectories are moving in the same direction. So we would call these graphs in the phase plane uh, trajectory, um, and we've got all of these things rotating in the clockwise direction. Um, so even without finding solutions independently for x and y, um, the phase plane is going to tell us exactly how the values x and y are related to each other, and if we indicate some direction of the flows along these trajectories, then we can, seem, we, we can see how time is, is playing a role in this picture.